Hi, my name is Lilika and today we're going to be looking at the conventions of news stories, articles and investigative journalism. This video is a part of a video series that I'm currently making on the update in the AS level English syllabus, that's code 9093, that Cambridge has rolled out in this year 2021. And right now I'm just working on a bunch of videos that go over the specific conventions that they want you to know about, so that if you have to write a specific type of text or have to analyze a specific type of text, you at least have a feeling for the type of text and you kind of know where to start. So let's get right into it. First up, we have news stories. What I found in my research is that there are four specific equally important characteristics that a news story must have for it to feel like a news story. And this is what people who write actual news stories have in mind and look for. The first one is accuracy. So this one's all about factual accuracy. Every name, date and quote must be precise and an accurate representation of the true facts. A lot of the times, the first thing people see uh, when it comes to an event that happened is the new story that is written about it. So if your facts are incorrect, you can spread a lot of misinformation and that's why accuracy is incredibly important when it comes to writing a new story. Secondly, balance. It is incredibly important to have a fair perspective of the story that you're writing about. You must paint a whole picture of the event or idea that is the topic of the news story, including both arguments and counter arguments. This does tie into the third characteristic that I have listed, and that's objectivity. Your story must be an impartial recount of the events that have transpired or the idea that you're writing about. The story can't be recounted as the writer would have liked to have seen it or as the readers would like to hear it be recounted. Again, people form their opinions based on information in news stories, so it is important the writer remains as objective as possible. The fourth characteristic of a news story is that it must be concise. The message should be absolutely clear. The meaning should be organized, distilled. The reader shouldn't have to wonder what the writer is writing about. There is a fifth characteristic that is worth at least being mentioned, and that is that the news should be current. The information a news story offers may only be relevant for a short period of time as events transpire, um, and the information offered should always be the latest news on the topic, since that is what people have come to expect when it comes to news stories. When you're reading the information, you assume that's the newest that there is on the topic or idea. So though I didn't list it, there is that as well. All right, now with new stories out of the way, let's move on to articles. There are two types of articles that you can always look out for. There are popular articles and scholarly articles. So the conventions of popular articles is that they're written by a publication staff of journalists. They're written for the general public. They are shorter, simpler and easier to understand. And a great example of a popular article would be one that you find in a magazine, for example. On the other hand, if you're given an article, you may be looking at a scholarly article. And the conventions of scholarly articles are that they're written by an authority or expert in the field. They are reviewed by a board of expert or peer reviewers. They are longer and they report scientific findings. They often have charts and graphs displaying research findings and the source material is always cited. And usually the audience is more people in the scientific community. Since we're looking at news stories, articles and investigative journalism, these are all types of texts that, you know, a journalist would be writing. So I thought I'd just throw in a few tips on how you can write like a journalist. So the first thing is your story should always have an angle. The angle of a story is the lens through which the writer filters the information they've gathered and focuses it to make it meaningful to viewers or readers. So that would be like the point or theme of the story. Something you can always find in a journalist writing is an introduction, which is like the first two-ish paragraphs. And that's like the intro or lead. That's something that catches your attention and pulls you in and gives you kind of a rundown of what the story is going to be about. The third thing that you can always find in anything written by a journalist is some type of quote. Using quotes from different types of people is a great way to inject a bit more objectivity or a few more perspectives into your story that you are writing. Also, if the person you are getting the quote from is an authority in a certain field, that can help establish some credibility in what you are writing. The fourth thing you can always find in anything written by a journalist is an attribution. That's plainly just where the information in your story comes from, as well as who is being quoted. So that would be the source's full name and job title. All right, with that out of the way, let's hop on over to investigative journalism. 
So investigative journalism is like these other two types of journalistic pieces that you can write, except that they're a lot more systematic in depth and they include um, a lot of original research. Investigative news reports aim to uncover matters that are either purposefully concealed or hidden under chaos and confusion in circumstance or information. So basically they are exposing facts to the public and seek to hold larger corporations or government entities accountable for corruption. So when a big news enterprise senses that there's something going on behind the scenes in a larger corporation or some form of government entity, they'll send a journalist in to go do some really in-depth research to try to really get to the truth of the matter and to then expose that to the public so that the general public can really have the cold hard facts when it comes to this information because generally they're trying to combat misinformation. So because of all that, an investigative news report tends to be longer and more complex than a typical news story. So here are a few tips for writing an investigative news report. The first thing would be to avoid using absolutes. When you're writing an investigative investigative news report, you want especially then to be as objective as possible since again you are trying to combat misinformation. When you're writing an investigative news report, you are plainly just trying to put the facts out for the general public so that they can draw their own consensus on what they think about the topic or the events that has transpired. So because of that, you want to be as objective as possible and a good way to make sure of that is to avoid using absolutes such as the ones that I've listed over there. The second thing you'll see investigative journalists use a lot in the writing are active verbs. Because in the end, even though you are trying to uncover a matter by, you know, uncovering facts, you're still writing a story and a story needs to be interesting. So using active verbs is a great way to really inject some energy into your writing. The third thing you'll see um, investigative news reporters do all the time is use detailed facts to establish credibility. The last thing you wanna do when you're writing an investigative news report is to be vague. That would really go against the point of an investigative news report, which is to provide clarity. Incorporating details into the facts that you give will make what you're saying a lot more convincing. And as I said, it's a great way to establish credibility. And the fourth thing that you'll see investigative news reporters use is interviews. As I mentioned before, using interviews or quotes is a great way to inject uh, a few more perspectives and people with different opinions, uh, give them some room to speak on the topic that you're writing about as well. That'll help with objectivity. And also if you use people who are an authority in the field, um, that'll really help uh, establish more credibility in your writing. But that's the end of that. If you want this video in blog format so that you can study it without having to pause constantly, just click on the first link in the description. The Cambridge at Home blog for this specific video will be linked there. Also, if you like the video, give it a like. If you really liked it, subscribe. This is the type of content that I am really focusing on right now. So if you want more of this, subscribe to get notified for when I upload the next conventions video. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one and good luck on your studying journey.